In today's episode, we're going to be talking about lower back injury prevention for field hockey. It's one of the most common injuries and it's one of the biggest problems because it takes a lot of players out of the game, stops them playing regularly and can be a real problem when we're looking at trying to you know, have a whole season without injury essentially. So we're going to look at some of the factors behind it, why it happens, how it happens and then what we can do about it from an exercise prescription standpoint. So you've got some idea of different exercises you can be doing to help to reduce the risk of injury and also if you've had the injury what you can be doing on an ongoing basis to prevent further injury in the future. So when we look at the the game itself in hockey, hockey players spend a large amount of time in trunk flexion which means with the trunk flexed forward and this is effectively because the ball's on the ground and you're using a stick you have to stay in these low positions during dribbling with the ball, during passes, during shooting you're always in this flex position. So the problem with that is that you're going to get more loading through the lumbar spine and that's going to put more stress on certain areas of the body. As you can see in this sort of clip here, the player is moving around uh, the cones in a flex position and the closer the ball gets to them, the more they're going to have to go into flexion in order to get lower down towards the ground. If you're in a position where you have to do this quite a lot, let's say you're a defender and you're having to get into quite low positions on the ground in the D as an example, in a defensive position, then you're going to be spending more time in flexion. That's going to obviously increase the loading on the lumbar spine. This kind of in part explains why you get more lower back problems in a sport like hockey. To further explain this, hip extension and back extension moments are required to maintain this posture. By moments, we mean uh, forces essentially having to be created in order to maintain that posture. So the muscles around the trunk um, and the hip, particularly the posterior chain and the lumbar extensors, are going to have to do a lot of work to support that position. If spending lots of time in that position, then there's going to be more load on these tissues. So there's going to be more loading, for example, on the lumbar spine, uh, more, lo more loading through the hamstrings, more loading through um, the trunk muscles more generally. And because of that, lower back is one of the most common injury sites in hockey. There's been lots of papers that have found this across different demographics from different time points. Some research going as far back as 1992 found this. And even in more recent research um, from Barboza in 2018, they found there's a very, very high prevalence of uh, lower back problems in hockey players for the reasons we've just described. By design, you have to stay in low positions for prolonged periods of time. And this happens on a frequent basis. And depending on the position you play, particularly if you're a defender, you're going to have to be in low positions more commonly um, than others. <clears throat> Obviously, this depends on how long you're on the pitch for. But if we can increase the amount of time that players are available and on the pitch more, it means that we can have our best players on the pitch for as long as possible. So as a team, you perform better. And as an individual, you're also available for longer so you can contribute more effectively and perform at your best without suffering lower back problems. So that's the overall problem we're looking at. Because of the positions required, there's more uh, loading through the lumbar spine, and this causes a higher prevalence of lower back problems um, in the sport. So the solution is threefold. One is to improve lumbar sacral and hip joint range of motion. The lumbar sacral joint is where effectively the um, lumbar spine itself and connects with the um, sacrum of the pelvis so that's effectively a joint that's created and that is where you get a lot of these lower back problems stemming from limited range of motion there can put more stress on the lower back and also hip range of motion if you've got poor hip range of motion it's going to put more stress on the lower back we know that from research as well number two is increasing trunk strength and capacity so again, if these muscles around the trunk can act as um, producers of force to stabilize and maintain key positions and do that for a long period of time, you're going to be in a much better position to not get injured because the muscles themselves are stronger and have greater capacity. And I'll talk about how to, how to assess this in a second. The third one is to strengthen the posterior chain, including the um, glutes, uh, hamstrings. So these are obviously important muscles in hip extension. And because of the flex position we find ourselves in, it's important that we have greater um, strength, greater force production capabilities in hip extension as well. And the glutes are the primary hip extensor, but the hamstrings also act as a secondary hip extensor as well. And so they're important muscle groups to make sure we strengthen them. Because of the forward flexion position as well, you're going to put you know more loading through them because we're in hip flexion. So you probably notice this, the hamstrings are under under load more frequently because of the position so again it's important that we look to strengthen these as well so more recent research has basically found that 
there's a big impact from that playing position on the amount of loading required of the posterior chain and therefore on the trunk and the risk of a lower back in hockey players. So the first solution we're going to look, look at implementing in the program is improving lumbar sacral and hip range of motion. So research going back as 1992, as I've already alluded to, showed that um, players with less range of motion um, in the lumbar sacral joint um, had increased risk of injury. Um, or on the flip side, players who had more range of motion at the lumbar sacral joint were able to um, or, or had a reduced risk of injury. Second of all, reduced hip abduction, which is where you're bringing the leg inwards across the body. Um, scores were evident in hockey players with a history of lower back pain. So having poorer hip abduction scores is also a factor in hip um, hip and lower back related issues. So if we can have a greater amount of hip abduction through greater range of motion at the hip, we're also to get into these kind of low positions. And this position here, just in the video in the background, there's a good example of the kind of common position you find yourself in in hockey. So you can imagine if you've got really poor range of motion at the hip and the lumbar spine, then if over time you're hitting these kind of positions again and again and again, it can become quite hard not for there to be issues arising off the back of that for the reasons we've already explained. So good examples of exercise you can include here are things like Spider-Man rotations, which is the position being shown here, lunges with a degree of rotation as well, and lateral lunges. And the reason for these types of movements is A, they increase hip range of motion. Two, they also look to increase some degree of thoracic rotation. And in a sport that's rotational, it's also important that we've got good rotation through the thoracic spine. Because once again, if we don't have good range of motion at the thoracic spine, it's going to place more stress on the lumbar spine. So we need to have um, that, that degree of range through, the, through that rotation in the thoracic spine as well. That's another really, really key factor. So that's another factor which I'll just touch upon, which is that there's a, a principle in um, tissue loading, which is stress. And stress is the amount of force experienced by a tissue divided by the cross-sectional area over which it's experienced. So if you effectively have poor range of motion, there's more force in a smaller cross-sectional area and therefore more stress. And that explains why people with a poor hip range of motion, poor lumbar sacral range of motion are going to experience more lumbar stress because the forces experienced are not being displaced over a greater cross-sectional area. It's very focused. There's a lot of um, a lot of issues happening there at the lower back. So by doing this kind of work regularly, you can look to improve this. I'll link to an article which we've written around mobility training as well to give you an example of types of exercise you can do. Um, a longer list than just these three here. But try to be doing this at least twice a week. And if not, if you can't find two kind of full sessions of, say, 20, 30 minutes to do a week, just try and do five minutes a day and just try and keep on top of this. Because it's obviously a very, very important factor in lower back uh, issues. Number two, then, is increasing uh, trunk strength and capacity for the reasons, again, we've described. The trunk muscles help to reduce the shear forces being experienced at the lumbar spine and therefore reduce the need for the lumbar muscles, i.e. the rectal the um, erector spinae to perform additional work. So we're basically offloading the loading required of the lumbar spine, which helps to reduce the risk of injury at the lower back as well. And research going back as far as 1992 also found that peak eccentric trunk extension torque, which is a mouthful, effectively the, the degree of um, torque that can be produced eccentrically at the, um, at the trunk um, is related to lower back pain again. So effectively a stronger trunk is related to reduced lower back pain. So good examples of exercise we can look to include here from a injury reduction perspective are things like lateral trunk flexions to train the obliques, plank hip extensions, and also leg lowers. Trunk training tends to get massively undercooked. So we need to be doing this regularly to begin with and also at volume and frequency. It's just, it needs a lot of loading because if you think about it, the trunk muscles are being used all day long in walking, standing, in all kinds of activity to keep our spine upright and to maintain posture so it can tolerate really really high volumes of training and so things like you know 200 300 rep circuits are to be expected in order to really increase the capacity of the trunk the final one then is strengthening the posterior chain so we're looking at the glutes uh, as a muscle group and we're also looking at the hamstrings glutes effectively are the the key um, hip extensor so glute max is a um a very very strong muscle group because of its morphology which is like its characteristics and b uh, how it is aligned across the hip it's got a huge mechanical advantage across other muscle groups for increasing that hip extension 
So by increasing the strength of the glutes and the hamstrings, we can enable more effective postures because A, without offloading the lumbar spine for the reasons we've described, and B, we're also looking to um, reduce the need for that lumbar muscle work by having more effective hip extension strength. And ultimately, this just reduces the loading on the lumbar musculature, which allows the lumbar, lower back to experience less stress. So really, really good exercises for this type of uh, loading are things like Romanian deadlifts, things like hip thrusts and rear foot elevated split squats for targeting uh, the hip posteriorly primarily, and also for making sure the glute is in a position where it's able to produce large amounts of force in a mechanically advantageous position. So including that, that type of work, again, twice a week as a, as a general rule, will mean that you're in a better position to um, increase hip extension strength and also reduce the risk of injury at the, lowest, at the lower back. So those are the three core areas. So just in summary, number one, improve lumbar sacral and hip range of motion. Try to be doing that at least twice a week. Trunk strength and capacity, at least twice a week and strengthen the posterior chain at least twice a week. So an example session might be something like a 15 minute mobility session focused around the uh, lumbosacral joint, hip joint, thoracic joints, for all those exercises I've just listed, a 20 to 30 minute session based around posterior chain strength, things like hip hinges, single leg work, and also isolated hamstring work. And then finally, a 20 minute trunk strength uh, and capacity session of say two to 300 reps across a variety of different um, parts of the trunk, things like lateral and anterior and posterior trunk exercises. And that would give you a 60 minute, really effective session to reduce the risk of lower back injury. But if you're just starting out, just start off with five minutes a day of a couple of basic exercises, even if it's just mobility and it's one glute exercise, you'll begin to get yourself on the right path and hopefully starting to reduce the risk of lower back injury so i hope that's been really helpful and if it has please like the video share it with other people and subscribe to the channel as well